Recently, a city has become popular because it has been occupied by young people who want to lie flat. It's Dali, a historical and cultural city in Yunnan province, southwest China, with a population of about 650,000. It has few factories in the area, and tourism accounts for a large share of the municipality's revenue. It was a city built around a large lake. Dali is occupied by young people lying flat looks like a commercial slogan. The slogan originated from a few video bloggers who are secondary landlords in Dali City. They claim that an army of 100,000 people lying flat have gathered and have occupied the city of Dali in Yunnan. I ran into two lying flat brothers just as I came downstairs and two more were coming. On this floor, it looks like people have already checked out. You see a big bed, a one and a half meter bed, and a computer desk. There's a gathering of the army of individuals lying flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are people lying flat in the village of Xia family. Every evening at 6.30 they watch the sunset. You see this view. Here, 350 yuan a room per month. The price is going up though. Newcomers may have to face a price increase up to 400 yuan. This lying flat army is having a meal, three dishes and one soup. After eating, they will go to the Star Bridge to enjoy the night view. Secondary landlords are touting Dali as a paradise to lie flat for the following reasons. First, the cost of living in Dali is 8,000 yuan a year, that is 1,162 US dollars, and the sea is within walking distance. The environment is beautiful and fresh. Second, the price of a single room under shared conditions is only 45 US dollars a month. The cost of living is low. You can enjoy the best natural environment with the lowest cost of living. Plus, you can enjoy watching pretty girls on the street. People who wish to lie flat, if they don't hurry to grab a place, they will face rising rent in the future. This is a bit of an exaggeration. However, looking at the city, it does fit the choice of those who want to lie flat in China. The concept of lying flat, as we presented in previous episodes, is a popular internet term in China since 2021. It roughly means to stop being eager and obsessed with success, to lie flat on the ground, cut down expenses, and just live. In the context of the domestic economic slump, the solidification of social classes and the aggravation of social problems caused by the COVID-19 epidemic, young people see no hope for their future and choose to lie down. Their motto is, no buying a home, no car, no marriage, no baby, no consumption, etc. Is it because I don't want to have children? I can't afford it. Housing is so stressful. Without a home, I'm afraid to get married. The cost of having a baby is high. There's no money or time to raise them. And women's work is easily affected by childbirth. Men don't give their wives enough security in marriage, making us even more scared of getting married. Buying a home at a school district for children is a headache. Once you have a child, working part-time is a sure thing, like a bottomless pit. Really. My life sucks, and I don't wish to leave it again, let alone having babies. I'm a leak. I resign myself to my fate, but I won't drag a child down to this mess. In March 2023, several Chinese media reported that a 30-year-old's master's degree holder had prepared 1 million renminbi, or about 150,000 US dollars, to retire in a flat in Yunnan province. The young man shared his experience online that the 150,000 US dollars was his principal and he lived on the monthly interest of 356 US dollars. His experience sparked a heated debate about whether the fixed income of monthly interest of 356 US dollars was enough to sustain his life. A netizen responded, if in a big city the monthly rent is 580 to 726 US dollars, a principal of 150,000 US dollars won't be realistic. But in small fourth or fifth tier cities, the monthly rent is only 80 to 100 US dollars. So a monthly allowance of 500 US dollars will be good for many people to live decently. Before the lying flat people converged on the city of Dali, it had already become a gathering place for digital nomads. 
Now many of these digital nomads have also joined the lying flat ranks and are likely to become its main body. As such, it won't be an exaggeration to say that this nomadic population adds up to 100,000. The former CEO of Hitachi Semiconductor and former CTO of Sony wrote in his book, Digital Nomad, that thousands of people will sell their homes to embrace a new way of life that relies on the internet to generate income while traveling the world. These people earn first world income from the internet, but choose to live in developing countries with corresponding standards of living. They are called digital nomads. This lifestyle allows them to completely escape the 9 to 5, the office grid, and the annoying commute. In the past two years, many software engineers from the first-tier cities of Beijing, Shanghai, and Hangzhou migrated their way to the southwest and stayed in Dali, gradually forming a digital nomad colony in this ancient frontier city in the southwest. In Dali, it was once popular to teach at home, engage in farming, eco-housing, etc. A travel writer therefore took the English variation of California and called Dali, California, the home base of Chinese hippies. For the past 20 years, the profession of software engineer has been synonymous with young and rich in China. They are the 996 generation who work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, sacrificing their health, but also enjoying the dividends of China's dot-com boom over the last 20 years. But now China's internet industry has entered an era with state-owned enterprises, SOEs in, private companies out, where even big tech companies are being nationalized. The overall economy is slowing down, regulatory bans are proliferating, and the epidemic is exacerbating this trend. Engineers are at increased risk of losing their jobs and their income and benefits are reduced. From time to time, engineers who have lost their jobs will join the ranks of those who are lying flat. They usually have nothing to do, spending most of their time on the internet playing games and chatting. Consuming two packs of instant noodles a day, they go out to the street for fun when not sleeping or gaming. Sometimes they go for a bigger hike, walking an extra 10 minutes to the sea. They reduce socializing to a minimum. According to the information provided by Chinese netizens, Dali is home to tens of thousands of lying flat youths. The reason is that after the room is sublet, the vacant space can also be rented out as a campsite. Some young people would tent in the courtyard. At least, it has access to running water, toilets, and Wi-Fi. Dali has spring-like weather year-round without frost and snow. Lying flat in camping style or like digital nomads has become a new realm for individuals who are lying flat. Tenting in the courtyard is much better than sleeping on the street where one has to face eviction from everywhere, especially from Changguan, the city by law officers. This is a street in Shenzhen. Chengguan is driving away people sleeping in the street. Why are there so many young people lying flat in Dali City? Well, that's because there are too many young people facing the serious problem of unemployment. This is a job fair at an arts center in northern China, packed with young people looking for work. As a human resources professional, I have to be honest and say that the employment market in Shanghai is very bad right now. It's even worse than last June when Shanghai just lifted its restrictions. Unemployment isn't terrible. What is scary is that there are no jobs for you to work again. Private companies are closing their doors, going bankrupt, and those that aren't closing, including foreign companies, are hiring fewer people. I think the demand for jobs and manpower in the market is only one-third of what it was last year at the same time. The recession in the job market has also caused a large number of people to leave Shanghai. Previously, it was very difficult to rent a place in Shanghai, but now it's difficult to rent. Some people ask me, what can I do? There isn't much one can do. This is a great storm of the times, and it isn't something that can be solved by one individual. There is only one thing to do now. Try not to make mistakes. What do you mean by trying not to make mistakes? Don't buy homes recklessly. Don't invest recklessly. Keep your flash flow stable. And most importantly, keep your body healthy. At night, dozens of hosts broadcast live from underneath an overpass bridge. 
This is a scene playing out in several Chinese cities. This is the scene at 1 a.m. in a provincial capital city in central China. Hundreds of young people were streaming live on the streets. The temperature was low. Many netizens were asking, has the vicious competition in the live stream industry become so bad now, forcing these hosts to move from indoors to outdoors? Why are there so many young people in China working as online hosts? It's not that it's glamorous, it's more of a helpless attempt under the current job hunting predicament. A few years ago, when the Generation Z made online celebrities and hosting the first choice of a job, the public opinion was concerned that young people had no ambition and that each generation was becoming worse than the previous generation. But now the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, is using the term flexible employment to avoid the mention of unemployment. More and more unemployed workers have to switch to live streaming, becoming one of the mainstays of flexible employment. In this video, a woman told AFP, there are too many hosts indoors now and the competition is saturated. There are too many of them. She also said, it's too cold outside. Sometimes it's zero degrees Celsius. It's unbearable. But in order to make a living, they have to choose late night hours to generate more traffic and gratuities. Look on the banks of the Grand River at 1 a.m. Some hosts were slapping their buttocks with the soles of their shoes, some were washing their hair with soy sauce, and some were rolling on the ground. It was a little spooky. People may think that live streaming is a job with a low threshold and high income. But according to Radio Free Asia, industry insiders say that not many of them can really earn money. It's a short-lived job, and most hosts don't last long, usually around three months. In addition, those who want to change careers later will face various difficulties as well. Youth unemployment is an insurmountable problem in China today, and there is little room for either the central government or local governments to do anything about it. So what can be done? On March 22nd, the topic of 211 university graduates earn more than 10,000 a month by collecting junk hit China's Baidu hot search list. Several Chinese media reported that Ms. Huang, born in 1995 from Hunan province, graduated from Zhengzhou University with a degree in international economics and trade. Because she didn't want to work mechanically, she started her own scrap collection business in August 2022, and her monthly income reached five figures, or at least more than 1,500 US dollars, achieving a certain degree of wealth freedom. But netizens have questioned the authenticity of the incident. Some people wrote, here we had a 20-year professional waste collection company closed down. How can an individual business compete with it? Someone else did the math. If she wants to earn 1,500 US dollars a month, she needs to make at least $50 a day. The most valuable item in the junk is a carton box, which sells at about 20 US cents and 26 cents a kilo. If she wants to earn $50, she has to collect 400 kilograms of cartons a day, equivalent to eight bags of cement. Some netizens concluded that the party's media has now gone to the extent of publicizing the 211 graduates of these major universities to receive crap, which is too pathetic. Netizens found that this propaganda tone is consistent with the recent criticism of the CCP media that college graduates cannot let go of their Kong Iji gown. Kong Iji is a character in a novel. The writer Lu Xun wrote his novel before the Communist Party took power during the Republic of China. The Republic of China was called the Old Society by the Communist Party, which was all evil and corrupt. This character was an intellectual who, despite living in poverty, still wore the shirt that was typical of intellectuals at the time to uphold his last dignity and refuse to do lowly work. Recently, the social media platforms in mainland China have become popular for Kong Yiji literature, in which young netizens imitate the quotes of this literary character and mock themselves for not being able to find a good job after studying hard for years, expressing their confusion and dissatisfaction that graduation means unemployment. Subsequently, the Central Committee of the Communist Youth League issued a document saying that Kong Yiji literature 
was an unnecessary insult to young people who have worked and studied hard. They also said that if they had long gowns that couldn't be taken off in their minds, they might miss the way out to full employment. On March 17th, China's official media, CCTV, also published an article criticizing Kong Yiji's literature and asked young people to change their situation through working hard and put down the airs of scholars, saying Kong Yiji's era is gone forever. Aspiring young people in modern times will never be trapped in long gowns. Lying flat can be said to be the most helpless choice for unemployed young people. They can only live a life with low desires and keep social interaction and expenses to a minimum. Without social interaction, there will be no expenses, but at least you have a place to stay, food to eat, and money to surf the internet. When these things are difficult, it is impossible to lie flat. Now we see the status quo of young people in China that some people aren't even able to lie flat. It has outraged many young people. This song was published on Billy Billy, a video sharing website in China. The name is Sunshine and Cheerful Kong Yi Ji. It was banned on the day it was published. Next, let's listen to this song and hear the voice of young people in China. We'll do our best to accurately express the meaning of the Chinese lyrics. Put on a tattered long gown and went straight to the pub in Lu Town. I called the waiter, ordered two bowls of wine, and paid nine coins for a plate of fennel beans. I spoke an elegant language, it brought ridicule and made me blush unconsciously. I said, how can you defile my innocence like this? And then took a sip of wine and continued to argue with them. The rickshaw man, Luo Tuo Xiangzi, died because he didn't work the rickshaw hard enough. Every article of the writer Lu Xun touches on a subject that cannot be touched. In ancient history, the peasants Chen Sheng Wu Guang, who rose up in rebellion, didn't have a sweet life because they weren't practical enough. All the people in the pub turned their attention to me in the end and asked me what the hell I was. I looked at my long gown and said I was sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. Sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. The writer with that outlandish piece of writing asked whether I would obey. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Even if we dump the labor into the river, we won't sell you cheap. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. You drive a Lamborghini, but laugh at me for not working hard enough. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. What does this rotten old society have to do with me? Although I wash my face clean every day, my pockets are emptier and cleaner than my face. I have to wear a long robe and copy books for the officials. I thought I had an easy job, but I never thought it would be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week. After I finished my work, I was arrested hungry by the government for maliciously demanding my wages. Why is there no labor law in this evil old society? Why is the dignity of our common people so easily trampled by the people who eat flesh? No one dares to answer these outrageous stories and sufferings now. Finally, the diners turned to me and asked me why you weren't afraid at all. I smiled and said because I am sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji, sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. I am a weak branch that has long given up the fight. The sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji, the sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. Our corners have been washed away by the years, leaving only a few scars. The sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji, the sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. The sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. The sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. You ask me if I am happy, I just want to swear. After hearing me out, the pub is full of glee. Those who abuse, question, rebut, and ridicule, what do they have anything to do with me? Study is for the rise of China, not to deliver food or courier. Everyone smiled openly upon hearing that. Except for that silly, sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. Sunny and cheerful Kong Yi Ji. Tear open the wall of decay and seek the light of righteousness. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. The most important thing is to have someone to applaud, no matter if it is criticism or praise. Sunshine cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Sunshine cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Despite all the selected comments, it is hard to be completely cold-blooded. The sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. The sunny and cheerful, Kong Yi Ji. Once it was my dream to be like Kong Ming, the renowned minister who assisted the emperor. But now I realize that Xiang Yang, the minister who was tortured to death, is my final fate.